Hi, I'm George with HVAC Direct. We're going to show you how easy it is to install a mini split system. This can be uh, for an addition or an unconditioned space in your home, and we're going to jump right into it. Be sure to subscribe, comment, and hit that notification bell. All right, so today we're going to be installing our uh, Easy Connect system. Uh, right here we've got the, uh, the outdoor unit and the indoor portion. Um, this is similar to some of the DIY systems you've seen out there on the market. Our Easy Connect system uh, has color-coded line sets uh, to make it easy for you to connect. Blue goes to blue, red goes to red. Uh, should be a straightforward install that anybody can do on their own. The reason we decided to go with the uh, Easy Connect system is the unit is already pre-charged with refrigerant uh, as well as the line sets. So it takes all the guesswork out of it as well as the contractor. Uh, saves you time, money, and makes it a heck of a lot easier to install on your own. For this one, we chose 18,000 BTUs for the space we're going to be putting this in. Uh, it's our second floor uh, addition area upstairs uh, that's a master suite uh, we're going to be using this in. The uh, reason we went with 18,000 is we're here in Ohio. Uh, we have uh, pretty, pretty good summers. I mean, it gets down into the 90s here, but our winters get very cold. Uh, so I went with a little bit larger BTU to make sure that I have adequate heating uh, during the heating season. The Easy Connect system should be able to heat down at 100% capacity to 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it will go lower than that if necessary, uh, but it will start uh, uh, losing some BTU rating after 5 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this indoor unit opened up and let's see what's inside the box. Okay. Looks like some nice foam padding. Now that we've uh, unboxed the indoor unit, um, other than the indoor unit itself, it does come with the uh, connection cable for the uh, indoor to outdoor connection already pre-connected to the, uh, the back of the indoor unit. Uh, so I'm just going to put this off to the side for now. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, but here's the, the bag of goodies that came with the, uh, the indoor unit as well. So I'm going to pop this open and let's see what we got here. All right. Looks like this should be the... Uh, plug-in Wi-Fi dongle uh, that'll go in the unit so uh, that way we can remote access this to, uh, to turn it on or turn it off or change temperatures. Uh, looks like it also includes a handheld remote and a wall mount bracket for the remote. Uh, looks like here's some mounting hardware for uh, the back plate for the, uh, the indoor unit. Uh, this is a drain spud for the outdoor unit. Um, if you're going to be using uh, this in a heat pump application, you'll want to hook this up. Uh, this just takes any of the, uh, the condensate water away from the unit so that way it doesn't freeze during the winter. Uh, batteries for the remote. Uh, looks like some extra insulation uh, to go over the uh, quick connect fittings once we get those all set up for the uh, inside to outside connection. And some uh, heavy duty uh, tar tape for uh, insulating the uh, pre-charge fittings. And then our owner's manual and our remote control manual as well. Also included with the, uh, the indoor unit in the box, make sure you don't discard this, uh, is the template to put up the wall bracket and to, uh, to drill your hole as well. In with the uh, outdoor unit also is your uh, refrigerant line set. Uh, the caps on these are going to be color-coded uh, to match the caps that are color-coded down here on the outdoor unit. As you can see here, blue and gray. Um, we have our rubber vibration isolators. Uh, these are going to go on the bottom of the feet uh, just to keep a little bit of padding between the uh, outdoor unit and the ground. This is our drain tubing for the indoor unit. Uh, there should be enough drain tubing here to get you down through the outside wall and uh, down to where it needs to go. Uh, in this bag, let's open up this bag of goodies. We got our wall sleeve for passing the line set through the, uh, the exterior wall. Uh, this is a beauty cap for that as well. Looks like a couple rolls of line set tape. So three rolls of line set tape and some putty to seal the, uh, the excess around the hole after you pass the line set through. All right, other tools and, and things you'll need to complete the installation. Uh, you'll need a, uh, a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, um, a level, a uh, power drill with a Phillips bit. Uh, you're gonna need some wire strippers, uh, needle nose pliers, and a three and a half inch hole saw. I already had the electrical pre-ran for me by a licensed electrician. Uh, so that portion of this job is complete. Um, as far as the, the Easy Connect system itself, depending on your skill level, it can take anywhere from two to probably five hours, uh, just depending on if you've got another set of hands or a helper with you, 
it's always recommended. It'll make the job go a lot easier. Uh, but if you're doing this on your own, I would put away about half of a day just to make sure you're going to be able to complete this in a timely manner. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, locate the template that comes with the, uh, the indoor unit. We're going to go ahead and get this set up and uh, get this mocked up into place up here where our indoor unit's going to go. Uh, I'm just going to uh, use some painter's tape to go ahead and uh, secure that. Um, and then once we get uh, the, the, everything set up, you're going to want to make sure you at least hit one stud. Um, the indoor unit's not super heavy, but uh, you just want to make sure it's got some good support behind it. Uh, with the wall mount bracket that's uh, included on the back of the indoor unit, um, in the pack that came with the indoor unit, uh, there's going to be some drywall anchors and screws uh, that'll help you attach the, uh, the plate to the wall. For the indoor unit, uh, you just got to be cognizant. They want about six inches from the ceiling and about four inches of clearance on uh, each side so you'll be able to service it. Okay, so we're about to get ready to drill the hole to uh, pass our line set and uh, electrical cable through to the outside. On the template, uh, there's a circled area around here. Uh, it's three and a half inches in diameter. Uh, should match up to a three and a half inch hole saw. Uh, you just wanna kinda uh, line up your arbor uh, to the center space here. And go ahead and start drilling through. All right, so our hole to the outside is drilled. Uh, I went ahead and uh, got our screw holes uh, lined up and marked too while I have the template still up on the wall. Um, at this point, the template is ready to come down. Uh, the wall sleeve is gonna get ready to go in and we're gonna go ahead and hang our bracket on the wall. All right, and then when you're taking the wall bracket off the back of the indoor unit, there's one screw that holds the, uh, the bracket into place. Uh, you just remove that Phillips head screw. Once you do that, uh, this slides down and out and out of place. And that's where that screw hole would line up. What I ended up doing was uh, measuring the, the depth of how far this came out, sticking out, protruding from the wall. And this is where the end of the wall meets where the sleeve should end. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this in my chop saw and I'm gonna cut this much off so that way we can put a nice trim ring around the outside of it. I'm uh, unbundling the uh, connection cable uh, so that way once we get the uh, indoor unit up, we could pass this on through the wall. Uh, this is gonna be the uh, electrical cable that connects your indoor unit to your outdoor unit. Um, the wires are color coded on the end, uh, red, black, white, and ground. You're just gonna match these exact same colors uh, to the exact same color terminals on the outdoor unit. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to take our line set connections, which are right here, and I'm going to bend these out uh, 90 degrees so that way we can pass this through the wall. Usually it's uh, best if you take your other hand and brace the, uh, the other side of the copper, and then just gently bend up like that. And now we're going to do the same thing with the drain hose. I'm going to go ahead and tape the electrical cable, the drain hose, and the line set together uh, to make sure this just passes through the wall easier. Uh, as you're going through, just make sure that your drain hose is on the bottom of the bundle. Uh, if it's up and over or around and around the side, uh, it won't drain well uh, and could possibly back up water into the unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We're gonna start getting the, uh, the indoor unit mounted. Uh, I'm gonna start first by passing the control cable through the, uh, the wall sleeve. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and get the line set and the uh, drain tubing through as well. I'll start with this. All right, well, the indoor unit is not super heavy. Uh, it does make it a lot easier if you have a second set of hands. So if you could borrow a buddy, a friend, a neighbor, uh, anybody who can help you out for five minutes, uh, it'll make this part of the job a lot easier. Uh, right now I'm going to bend the, uh, the line set down and the uh, drain tubing down in a 90 degree angle. Uh, that way I can start running it down the, uh, the wall here. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the, uh, the drain connection. Now I'm gonna remove the blue and uh, gray caps for the refrigerant tubing. back down I come. All right, we're about getting ready to set the outdoor unit. Uh, the electric has already been put in place by a licensed electrician. Uh, they went ahead and ran the main wiring, uh, the disconnect box, and set up the whip for us, so that way all we have to do is connect that to the outdoor unit. Uh, for clearances, uh, you want six inches from each side and 12 inches from the back of the unit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and straighten out the line set so that way we can make our connections up top and uh, make our connections down at the air handler. Uh, what I'm having Tyler do is just hold on to the end of the, the line set so it stays steady and straight. And I'm just gonna go ahead and roll this backwards. I'm gonna leave that end bent a little bit so that way I can uh, get into the condenser on the back end uh, so I don't have to rebend it twice. Yeah, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, start with the, uh, the smaller line set. Go ahead and try to get these straightened together and get these connected. I'm not gonna close up these fittings. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the insulation just halfway over them. Uh, that way I can leak check them before I'm all wrapped up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, caps off the refrigerant valves and then we're gonna connect the uh, line set to the outdoor unit. So that should be good there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, connecting the gray ones together. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten these by hand first, and then I will use a couple of box wrenches to, uh, to tighten them all the way down. Okay, I'm gonna use one wrench to back up the, uh, the fitting from the factory. And then one to tighten down the line set. Once it's snug, you just go ahead and stop. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the blue side. One wrench to back up the factory fitting, one to grab the line set. Okay. All right. 
those should be all set. Now we are going to remove the refrigerant caps. And I will need to go get a five millimeter Allen key so we can uh, open up the refrigerant and then start leak checking the fittings. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the refrigerant valves opened on up. Um, once I open this up, you should be able to hear a little bit of hissing and some noise running through the refrigerant lines. That's normal. Um, that's actually the refrigerant escaping the uh, compressor where it's trapped right now, uh, currently behind these valves. So once I open this up, it's gonna release refrigerant from that compressor uh, through this valve and up to the indoor unit. And I heard the refrigerant release. Okay, and then you're just gonna spin that all the way out till it stops, don't force it. Just till it's tight. And cap back on, that line is now open. All right, now let's go for the other one. Cap back on and that line is also now open. All right, we are all set with the refrigerant side. I'm just gonna double check and leak check those fittings. So I'm just gonna spray these on all the connections. This is just a mixture of Dawn dish soap and water. I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute. And what I'm looking for is any large bubbles uh, that'll start forming at the fittings themselves. And looks good. So those ones are good to go. Now I'm gonna do the same up top and double check those as well. Okay, those all look good too. Should be good to go. Right now, before I start the wrapping, I'm gonna go ahead and seal up the hole in here with some of this sealing clay that they gave us that comes with the unit. So I'm prepping to get that set up right now. Take this and kind of pre-mold it into the shape that I want it in. And that's just gonna keep any air gaps from going in behind the unit and going into the wall. I just wanna kinda of press that into place as best I can, just like that. And voila, that should keep any outside air from uh, going in behind the unit and then getting pulled in with the fan. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the, uh, the insulation for the extra pieces here. I, I'm gonna use a couple of zip ties uh, you can do this however you'd like to, but uh, just got to kind of do your best to get it in there as best you can. Just like that. Let's get this one ready. And get a couple zip ties on there just to hold it into place, and then uh, we'll go ahead and tape this all up so it's sealed nice and good. All right, we're just about getting ready to fire this up. Uh, I just want to make sure that we take all the tape off so the, the louvers and doors can open up as they need to and make sure the filter is in place. All right, the system is in. Uh, it's working flawless, super cold, uh, super quiet. Uh, it took a little over two and a half, three hours to get this all wrapped up, uh, all in a day's work. Uh, everything uh, has been gone over thoroughly after we were put everything together, double checked the electric, uh, double checked all the refrigerant connection fittings. It should have a, a great system that should last us a very long time. It was just that easy to install this mini split system. At HVAC Direct, we've got tons of brands and just about any solution to cover any situation that you may come across. Check out all our other mini split videos or learn all about HVAC. Be sure to subscribe, comment, and hit that notification bell. We'll see you next time.